What's up guys? Welcome back to another video. Today I have my best books of 2019 so far. And this is because I have been trying to film and upload wrap-ups, but it's just not happening. The footage ends up getting corrupt or I've deleted the footage or something and I'm just unorganized. So today I'm just going to talk about my favorite books of the year basically. Just positivity and all the books that I really like so far. Um, right now I'm filming this in September, but most of these books are probably going to make it to my end of the year list. So I've seen a couple people do this where they just talked about the best books of the year just to do like a mid-year wrap-up of what they've liked and I really like that idea and I thought that I would just talk positively about books rather than the negative. But if you would like to see a video like this where I just talk about my least favorites, let me know in the comments and I will make one. So today I'm going to be talking about 21 books that I really enjoyed this year. I just wrote down a list of all the books that I enjoyed and it ended up being 21. So I've had a really good reading year. My Goodreads challenge tells me that I've read 50 books this year. And I have DNF'd a couple, but when I'm on Goodreads, I do read because you kind of have to if you're gonna put it as DNF. Um, so I guess I've probably read like 45 or 46 books, but today I have 21 of my favorite books of the year or just books that I've just really enjoyed, given a five star. So I'm gonna get right into the video. If you enjoy this, give it a thumbs up. And if you've liked any of these books, let me know in the comments. Or if you didn't like them, let me know. Let's get into the video. Just a disclaimer that this is not my best books of the year list. So none of these are going to be the numbers that make it onto my end of the year list because number one is a really hard spot. And I'm not even sure there's so many books that I wanna put there but for this list we have Little Do We Know by Tamara Ireland Stone. I loved this book so much. I read it physically and I listened to it on audio and this book made me feel so many things. I cried just in like the first couple chapters because something was going on and I had no idea what was going on but this book is really all about near-death experiences. This is about Emery and Hannah and they have been best friends and neighbors for a long time but a couple months ago something happened where they stopped being friends and they stopped talking until Emery's boyfriend is found unconscious in front of Hannah's house and she basically saves his life. So then their friendship starts to come back together basically like they're trying to fix it again and it also talks about faith and afterlife and I just absolutely loved it. I'm a really big fan of Every Last Word by Tamara Ireland Stone but I think this is my favorite from her. This book knocked it out of the park. I was so hesitant to read this because I was like, I don't know if I'm going to like it. Read it and absolutely loved it. So if you are hesitant about picking it up, I highly recommend to go and get it. The next book is one of my all-time favorite books ever, probably, and this is The Music of What Happens by Bill Koingsberg. I absolutely love this, and I'm probably going to say that for every single book, but I do because it's so good. This is about Max and Jordan, and Max is a bro, basically. He's a baseball player. Jordan and his mother are struggling financially after his dad died a couple years ago. They're trying to bring back his food truck that he had. However, both of them don't know how to cook or how to run a food truck. And one day, Max just comes up to the food truck because he recognizes Jordan from school. His mom gives him a job on the food truck and it's a food truck romance. It's really great. It has trigger warnings for sexual assault. But I really enjoyed that this was implemented because it was sexual assault among a man and I feel like we never see that really happen and I just really enjoyed that. And there's just a lot of like toxic family things going on and I just really enjoyed this book. It was so good. It's so underrated. So many other people talk about it like this and I just think you should pick it up because it was amazing. So my camera died during the process of filming this, so now I'm back. The next book is Playlist for the Dead by Michelle Falkoff. I ended up reading this for the Summer Biannual Bibliothon or the Final Biannual Bibliothon. And I wasn't sure if I was going to like it. 
I had a TBR where balloons picked my TBR and they came through because I really, really enjoyed this. It's probably one of my favorite books to date and I just really enjoyed it. This is about Sam and he finds his best friend Hayden dead and he just has to deal with the aftermath of that. It's all about grief, but it's kind of like 13 Reasons Why, but I would pitch it as a better 13 Reasons Why because Hayden has left Sam a playlist and I just love when books incorporate music. One of my favorite books is The Beauty That Remains and I really like that because it incorporates music. But this every chapter has a song and it's just really interesting and I don't know, I just really like how this was done. There's also a trigger warning for outing and just suicide and death and depression in general. I just absolutely love this. It was awesome. Next is a graphic novel or comic series and this is The Avant-Garde's Volume 1. This was a review copy from NetGalley and I really, really enjoyed it. It's definitely underrated. It just came out in September and I highly recommend if you are looking for a queer graphic novel, highly recommend this one. This is about a queer basketball team set in college and basically there's this girl and she's trying to get enough people for a basketball team and she's just like very peppy and she just wants everything to be perfect and it was a riot but it's also really addictive. I'm disappointed that I have to wait so long to get the next volume because these are just so good and I just really recommend them. I just enjoyed it. It's like a mediocre basketball team and it's funny and queer and it's really good. Next is The Love and Lies of Rakshana Ali by Sabina Khan. This was a debut novel. This is about a girl named Rakshana and she's a lesbian and she is closeted because of her conservative Muslim parents. And one day her mom finds her kissing a girl in her room and they send her off to Bangladesh to get a boyfriend and be sent away to get married. So it was all about arranged marriage. The stuff that the parents do is fucked up, but I just really enjoyed it. It was so fun to read and I just really enjoyed it. And I wasn't, I didn't think I was going to enjoy it as much as I did, but it was amazing and I highly recommend to go and pick it up. Next is a middle grade and this came out last year and it is One True Way by Shannon Hitchcock. This is a historical fiction set in the South in 1977. It talks about gay rights and just about two girls that like each other but they're not getting the messages that they want and they're scared that they're not supposed to love each other or even like each other at all. It is so good. It was a great way of seeing two sides. In this book, they talk about how the Bible says that being gay is an abomination, just being homosexual in general. And it was just such a good book and I just really enjoyed it. So if you are looking for a queer middle grade, highly recommend this one. This is just a recommendations video basically because that's what every video I make basically is. Next is another book that I read for the biannual Bibliothon and this is Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I listened to this on audio. It was amazing. I am fully convinced that Daisy Jones and the Six are a real band and I won't listen to anyone that tells me otherwise because they are real and I don't want to hear anyone say that they're not. This is about a fictional band and it was just amazing and I don't understand how people say that it is boring. That was the least boring book I've ever read in my life um, or listened to in my life. It was great. I highly recommend it. <laughs> I'm saying that for every book, but really Daisy Jones and the Six is so good, the hype is real. And ironically, I put this next book on the list right after Daisy Jones and the Six, and it is The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I also listened to this on audio, and Evelyn Hugo is a real person. This is about a fictional movie star who is Cuban and bisexual and it talks about her whole life. It's her biography and it's amazing. <laughs> I just really enjoyed it. It was so good. The hype is real. Next I have another queer middle grade and this is George by Alex Gino. This follows a trans girl in school 
it's great. She just wants to be Charlotte in the play of Charlotte's Web and they just talk about the complications with that. She's not out to her family but there are signs and this book just meant a lot to me and made me cry and I just really loved it a lot. Next is a novella that I read for Cramathon and this is Knit One Girl 2 by Shira Glassman. I've had this on my e-reader for a while and I just picked it up because I needed something short for Cramathon and I really enjoyed this. This is about a girl who is a yarn dyer. This is just interesting to read about the whole process of yarn dyeing and she meets a girl and it's a cute little romance but also learning about knitting and yarn dyeing and she goes viral over night and it was just fun to read and I recommend it if you're looking for a queer novella. Next is a 2019 release and this is Like a Love Story by Abni Nazimin. <laughs> I love this book so much. We read it last month for the Rainbow Reads book club that I host. It's an LGBTQ plus book club. Links are always down below. We're currently reading Summer of Salt but this book was phenomenal. This is a historical fiction set in 1989 during the AIDS crisis and it is set in New York. This follows three perspectives. This primarily focuses on our main character Rez and he is an Iranian boy and he has gotten a lot of negative cues about being gay. So to him, being gay is not good. And he's just trying to come to terms with being gay um, by be, being surrounded by other gay people. But it also really talks about AIDS and it's heartbreaking. I listened to it on audio and I just really enjoyed it. I gave it a five star. I read this for Reader Rama and I just uh, loved it so much. It was so good. I highly recommend to pick it up. <laughs> I need to start saying something that isn't a highly recommend, but I do highly recommend it. I read this for Reader Rama and I listened to it on audio. I really enjoyed the audio, but in general, the story was just so powerful. Next, if you followed my Reading Rush vlogs, I read Carry On by Rainbow Rowell. Audio and physical. And I absolutely loved it. Baz is my favorite character ever and Wayward Sun's coming out soon or it's already out and I'm jealous of people that have it because I am broke and I can't buy books but I want it so badly. Um, maybe I'll link my Amazon wishlist down below if anyone wants to please help me out. <laughs> I mean I'm not saying you have to but if you can't support me on Patreon I have an Amazon wishlist that I'll link down below. Um, but you don't have to. I'm kind of kidding, but I'm kind of not because I will link it down below. <laughs> Next, I have two graphic novels that I really enjoyed. I have Bloom by Kevin Pandetta. I just love this so much. I devoured it and I just love the story. It is a male-male romance set in a bakery and it has queer people of color and it was just great. I don't even have words to describe like what it was about, how much I liked it because that's a spoiler and I just recommend to get it because it's so good. Next I have Laura Dean Keeps Breaking Up With Me by Mariko Tamaki and Rosemary Valerio O'Connell. I really love Mariko Tamaki. One of my favorite books is This One Summer and I just really love her and this was a really good book. It is a queer book and it tackles the subject of a toxic relationship. It was done really well and there's a trigger warning for abortion. Next is a book that I read for a summerathon and this I also listened to on the audio. We've been slaying the audiobook game this year. This is Love and Gelato by Jenna Evans Welsh. This is set in Italy obviously and I've never read a book that was set in Italy but I just really enjoyed this. This is about a girl whose mom dies from cancer and she goes to live with her dad. She's never met him before. She is solving the mystery of how her parents got together, who her dad really is, and that is through a journal that her mom left. And I just really love book premises like that. And I also got to just experience Italy through this character's eyes and I really enjoyed it and I want to pick up more of her books. I really want to read Love and Luck maybe by the end of the year or maybe next year. If you didn't know, this year I kind of did the unwrapped books. I'm kind of failing at it, but my first unwrapped book 
was Kiss Cam by Kiera London. I've had this sitting on my shelves forever and I really enjoyed it. This is like a romance and I'm kind of like a, I was just like a sucker for this book. Um, it's like super girly and I don't like it like that, but um, I really enjoyed this. This is about three friends who run a YouTube channel and they're vlogger. They start a prank where it's Kiss Cam and the guy just like kisses her out of nowhere. There was consent before this, so it's not like he's just randomly kissing her, but the fans really like it and a romance ensues and I just really enjoy it. I love a friends to lovers trope. This is great if you are a fan of the friends to lovers trope. Next on the list is Girls on the Verge by Sharon Biggs Waller. I absolutely love this. It is a book about a girl who is going to get an abortion in Texas and it just shows how hard it is and the struggles and I just absolutely loved it. There is trigger warning for abortion and just all of the feelings that go with that and I just really enjoyed it. I saw that Chelsea Dawing Reads was hyping it up in the beginning of the year and I knew I had to get it and I actually pre-ordered it which I never do nowadays but I knew I had to get this one and I absolutely loved it. Next are two books that I read in the beginning of the year. First, I have Falling Into Place by Amy Zhang, and this book follows a girl who wants to commit suicide, and it reminded me of If I Stay. Um, this girl just is struggling a lot. She plans a way to crash her car and commit suicide, um, and this is just a whole book set in flashbacks but also set during the time that everyone is in the hospital and you just get to see the perspective of everyone that is really concerned about her and I just really enjoyed this so if you liked If I Stay or you didn't like If I Stay I highly recommend this book. It's so underrated and I've had this on my shelf for a while and I never picked it up until now and I'm really glad that I did. Next I have all in Pieces by Suzanne Young and this was either an unwrapped book or just another book that I've had on my shelf that I never read and I absolutely love this as well. This book talks about poverty and addiction and it is about this girl who goes to a detention center because she poked this guy in the face with a pencil but he was not a good person anyway but she ends up getting sent to a detention center and she is trying to just parent her brother and it's just like a really hard time but I just absolutely love this. There is a trigger warning for sexual assault. I I absolutely love this. It was really good. Now we're getting down to the last two books so thank you if you've stayed this long. I really appreciate it. But next I have Peter Darling by Austin Chant. Is anyone surprised? I really enjoyed this and it is a trans retelling of Peter Pan and it's great. Go read it. It's really good. Own Voices representation. One of my favorite authors. It's so good. There is a romance between Captain Hook and Peter. It's pretty cool. I really enjoy it. And the last book is I Wish You All the Best by Mason Deaver. This follows Ben who is a non-binary teen and they get kicked out of their house when they come out and it just talks all about that. I absolutely love this. It's a great book. That's why it's on this list. So those were the 21 books I read this year that I've really enjoyed so far. There are so many more and if you would like to see me do the least favorites let me know when I will create that. Um, I do have a Patreon so if you would like to support me any other way go over there and you will get a personalized letter from me and be able to see exclusive videos like a full bookshelf tour which is coming soon. But if not, you can subscribe. It is free. And that's the video. I hope you guys are all having a great day and I will see you next time.